All right, what's going on my broskies? My name is Totski back again here to bring you guys yet another One Piece Treasure Cruise video and today we were expecting there to be news on uh, the One Piece Treasure Cruise anniversary because uh, last night there was a data download. Well, no, it wasn't a data download, but um, shout out to Anlord who uh, is in, he, basically one of the big data miners for the game. Um, he always gets these icons pretty much right before a data download happens. So we saw that this was coming, right? Which is Luffy, Sanji, Germa Double Six, Sweet Commanders, and everything that's supposed to arrive with the anniversary, including Six Plus Capone. So we got this information and we're like, okay, surely we're going to be getting the data download soon. Like an hour passed, we didn't get a data download. News time today, we still don't have the data download. So whenever this data download happens, I'll be bringing you guys all the information with what we've got. But we don't have anything right now. We would have thought by now we would have had the information, but we don't. Even just weirdly enough, you know, with uh, with JP, they had their icons given out for the uh, Ace versus Akainu batch. And then, you know, an hour later, they had the data download. That never happened with Global. So I don't know what's going on with Global. I don't know why we don't have the data download yet. I mean, it's just the anniversary Sugo Fest. We, we know what's coming already. It's just a matter of us seeing what the structure of the Sugo Fest is like, seeing the events and stuff like that. So it, it, it is weird. I don't understand what's going on there. So once that does drop, I'll bring you guys information about that. But for what we have right now, we have this notice here starting February 24th at midnight. The following ships will be permanently upgraded. So old ships in the game that were basically, well, one of these ships in particular I actually do use, but the other three uh, were really bad, never really used, but they're getting upgraded to become a little bit more usable now. So the Miss Love Duck, the Big Top, the Bezen Black, and the Dreadnought Saber. Now many players out there probably don't even have a single one of these ships because the only way that you could previously get these ships was by completing certain missions in story mode because the Miss Love Duck is the Alveda ship and you could get it by completing certain story missions for the uh, Alveda story quest. Uh, this was for Orange Town, this was for Syrup Village, and this was for the Baratier story mode. And after you completed the missions, you got given a ship and you'd have to level it up. And these ships were really bad. But uh, starting from March 1st, the ships are going to be available from the Rayleigh's Bazaar if you do not have them already. So I don't know how much they're going to cost. They're going to cost Rayleigh points probably... 5,000 to 7,500 Rayleigh points for one of these ships and uh, in today's video I just kind of want to break him down and discuss which one of these are kind of worth it or not um, Just off the top of my head the Dreadnought Saber as I mentioned I actually do use this ship um, it, It's a ship that does not give your crew an attack boost which is why a lot of people kind of steer clear of it um, it does give your crew HP boost, um, but it does end of turn damage. It does like a, a small amount of end of turn damage. I think with the upgrade, they give you more HP and they give you more end of turn damage. I think that's basically what it's all about. Even with the upgrade, the ship does not boost your attack, but you can use the ship on your team. And if your team is strong enough, you can just allow the ship to bypass resilience for you because it does end of turn damage. Uh, it can't be like manipulated. It cannot be removed. Like it's unless if it's a ship bind. If, if you get if inflicted with ship bind, obviously that's not going to that's not going to be too good. Um, but yeah, of course, this is uh, this is really nice to have. But let's go ahead and start breaking it down. I actually have the uh, the ship website available here. So let's go ahead and start breaking all of these down. So the Miss Love Duck is this one right here, which is the Alveda ship. Um, and you can see that you get complete the Alveda hideout missions, which of course we, we don't have them anymore. So you have to get them from the Rayleigh's Bazaar. So this ship is going to boost striker character's attack by 1.5 and increase the matching orb rate slightly and then increase the base attack by 100 as well. I don't know, is that for all characters or like for all striker characters or just your captain? That seems pretty interesting. And then also reduce damage taken by 10%. Actually, my webcam is actually getting in the way, so I can actually move that real quick and you guys can see that right there. So yeah, this uh, this ship is giving you actually quite a lot. 1.5 attack, increasing matching orb rate, 100 base attack boost, which is very interesting, and then 10% damage reduction. This is not a bad ship, um, but of course, it, uh, you have to buy from the Rayleigh's Bazaar, and striker teams at the moment are not super popular, so I don't know if this is going to be a ship that you want to get straight away. Myself, personally, I will purchase this ship. I actually don't have this ship. There are a couple of them that I don't have, but yeah, this ship is actually pretty decent. Not too bad at all. So what was the other one that uh, we got to talk about? The other one is the Big Top. Okay, so the Big Top is the buggy ship. Um, big Top. And there are a couple of them, but there's this one right here, the Big Top, which is the buggy ship. Complete all Orange Town missions. And it says, boost the attack of characters under 40 cost by 1.5 times, and then boost their health by 1.4 times. 
that's not a terrible ship at all, actually. Um, specifically for, like, obviously Legend Buggy, because he's a character that boosts the cost of 40 or less. Though, depending on what type of team composition you're going for, there are some situations where you're not going to be using characters that are 40 cost or less on a Buggy team, because you can use Legends, you can use Treasure Map characters, all relatively useful units uh, that will help Buggy teams just excel. Uh, or, like, another character that would work with this ship, obviously, would be, like, Legend Sugar, because Legend Sugar also boosts the cost of 40 or less, and gives Giving you a 1.4 health boost on top of that is really good but again the same thing with buggy is that when you're using a sugar team she's a rainbow captain like three times rainbow captain but if they are 40 cost or less they get 4.5 so the problem there is is like yeah you can still run treasure map units you can still run um sugo fest exclusives but uh they will not get this 1.4 health boost until you make them into a toy soldier in which they will get the health boost which it's just very finicky i don't know how well you're really going to be using this ship honestly because for those t for those characters that you know boost the characters that are 40 cost or less you are often often going to be using characters that are not 40 cost so that's a little bit of a problem there but in the situation when you are using a team that is like you know full-on 40 cost or less then yeah this ship would actually be a pretty solid choice because the extra health is no is no slouch and this is very similar to like the moby dick it basically is the moby dick ship but uh you have to be 40 cost or less and also you um uh, it also, uh, you know, you don't start at 50% health like the Moby Dick ship. Actually, one thing that isn't really stated here is that does the, does the health boost happen to all characters, but then the attack boost is just 40 cost or less because there is a full stop here. So I don't know if that means like, oh, it's just a different sentence, just 1.4 health to everyone. Um, we'll have to see, but... I'd say this is not a ship that you're going to be using too often, but still interesting to talk about. So the next one is the Bezin Black. This one is actually a really, really good ship. Um, even before, even before, um, you know, the upgrade, I actually did use this a few times because of the minus one cooldown, because there were never many ships that would give you minus one cooldown. Um, so now, again, you have to complete all the, the, the Syrup Village missions, but now you can just get it from the Rayleigh's Bazaar. Reduces the cooldowns of all specials by one at the start of the fight, boosts the attack of quick by 1.5, and give them a 30% health boost. Yeah, this is a really good ship, and, you know, there are definitely a lot of situations where you're going to be using a mono quick team. Um, like, if you're using, like, Garp Challenges, for example, but you got to remember, for Garp Challenges, you just get all your cooldowns given to you anyway, so this kind of the, this, this part of the ship doesn't help you too much in Garp Challenges, but, you know, still 1.5 attack and a 1.3 health boost, that's really good, and for a ship that's pretty easily accessible, yeah, that's actually really nice, um, but again, it really comes down to how often you're going to be using a mono quick team, because quick is one of the worst colors in the game to build, like, a mono color for, so, again, like, it really does depend on what type of team you're trying to build for, but if you are trying to build a mono quick team and you don't have many good ships for quick units, then uh, this is a pretty solid choice. But you got to remember as well is that if you are going to use this ship, but you're going to be using dual units like Shanks Crew, for example, when Shanks Crew is in his Psy form, you don't get this 1.5 attack. You don't get the 30% health boost. So that is a little bit of a downside, right? So because of dual units, these ships might not be as useful, but you know, it depends on what you want to do. It's not a terrible ship. I think it's actually a pretty usable ship overall. And then the final one is the Dreadnought Saber, which I did talk about before. Um, it, it is a ship that I have used a lot. So this ship, obviously, you got it from the Baratier missions, but now you get it from the Bazaar. Boost the health by 1.5 times, and then deals 10,000 Titleist damage at the end of each turn to all enemies. Um, the 10,000, I believe, was upped. I think before it was around 5,000 damage, and I I'm not too sure how much health you would get last time, but I know it was not very good. Actually, I can log into my game and have a look at what this ship actually does, because I do have this ship. Um... But yeah, this is a ship that you're not going to use too often, but you know, sometimes, you know, the enemy is just going to have a really, really annoying uh, resilience buff and having the ability to have a ship that is just able to bypass resilience for you for free is so good. But of course, you got to remember, you don't get an attack boost. That's the big downside to having that ship. Um, so the Dreadnought Saber before is 1.5 health to all units and 5,000 typeless damage. So they, they didn't actually buff the HP at all. It's just the typeless damage is up to 10,000, so that actually doesn't help the ship at all. What would have been nice is if they gave you some, even if it was a really small attack boost or like minus cooldown or something like that, that would have made the ship insane. Um, and then as for the Bezin Black, which uh, we did talk about just before, I do have this ship as well, so we can quickly just discuss that. So this ship before, instead of this, it would be minus one cooldown and it would be 1.4 attack instead of 1.5. 
and then the HP was also a 1.3. So they make this 1.5 into a one uh, from from 1.4 into 1.5. So a, a very minor upgrade to the to, to the attack, which is which is fine. That's all they basically needed because um, you know 1.4 attack for a ship is just really weird. I don't actually have the other two. I do not have the big top, and I do not have the uh, Miss Love Duck. But overall, I do think the ones that I did have, you know, the Bezin Black and the Dreadnought Saber, are the ones you're probably going to use the most of. However. The Miss Love Duck, if you're building a striker team, this is a really good ship, dude. The attack boost, the increasing rate of matching slots, uh, it says it's it's a slight increase, so it's probably not going to be too significant, but, it, it, I mean, hypothetically, if you're running like Neko Mamishi, like Legend Neko, then you'd want to be using this because you don't want to get recovering tandem slots. And then boosted base attack by 100, that is like super interesting, I like that, like that's super bizarre that like you don't see too often, so I'd like to see more ships do something like that. And then 10% damage reduction. Like This ship is actually really good. It's just about how often you're really going to be using striker teams. So this is some interesting news, man. This is really, really interesting. And of course, all of these updates are going live on February 24th at midnight. But even if they are going live then, you can't actually get the ships until the 1st of March. You have to wait for the Rayleigh's Bazaar to refresh at the end of the month. And then you can go ahead and purchase them. So, uh, But of course, we are getting the anniversary Sugar Fest on the 25th at 1900 PST. So a lot of people are going to be doing pulls. Uh, a lot of people are going to get a lot of um, Rayleigh's points back and even if you've done pulls on the countdown sugo fest you're going to get some rally points back from that so you know that you can use that to purchase um you know new rumble scrolls when the when the when the bizarre resets or you can use it to buy some of these ships if you want to go ahead and do that too so that's my thoughts and opinions i think the bezin black and the dreadnought saber are ships that are that might see play um especially building a quick team for this this one's really good for getting around resilience without having to run like kaido or a poisoner or a resilience remover and then the miss love duck is a very good ship for strikers but it's a matter of how often you're using striker teams. I think the big top is a very bad ship and I don't really think it's going to see much play at all. Um, but yeah, the other three I think are definitely worth considering at the very least, right? But that's my thoughts and opinions about that. Unfortunately, we don't have anniversary news just yet. Uh, we're hoping that it comes sometime soon. You never know. Maybe when the day resets today, we might get a data download maybe later tonight. Um, if not, I think probably, probably news time tomorrow. If it doesn't happen news time tomorrow, I'm going to be asking questions because I feel like it probably should be happening by now. We should probably start to get some info right now. But anyways, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. And if you guys did enjoy it, make sure you go ahead and leave a like. And if you want to stay up to date with all the content that I post, including more One Piece Treasure Cruise content, make sure to hit the subscribe button down below. But on that, guys, I'll see you guys within the next video.